Is it going? Three, two, one. You are now entering the Cue the Muses podcast. Please reserve submission of any join me to statistics until after the program. Hello and welcome to Cue the Muses podcast. How many are we up to? Eight? Is this eight? This is eighteen. Eighteen. Episode eighteen. Eighteen Musecasts coming your way, guys. We're back in the studio, live in the laboratory. This is where the magic began on our project of our sci-fi comedy web series, 30-minute episodes with new music videos unveiled in each episode. The Normans attacked you. They were trying to steal your documentation on shutting down Harmonia. I mean, I salvaged what I could, and Ash and I, well, we've been, we've been picking up where you left off to the best we can. We finished your mind travel machine. We just got back from entering your mind. It's the first test that we've done. We were able to collaborate with your muse. The process must have spiked your brainstem activity and it's why you're waking from your coma now. This is a completely unintended side effect, but very exciting, but, well, it's incredible. We're inside you. Oh, my. It went well. Francis, this is Dick and Ash. Dick and Ash? No, no, Ash and Dick. It's, all, it's always Ash and then Dick. Well, come in. I'm gonna leave you boys alone if you need anything. I'll be downstairs. These events while seconds die, no comfort till the final lie. Brandish spikes with flaming skulls, blackened sky and burned out holes. Torch created just like God's a better man. My life the odds. Tell people, check it out, and the advertisement's over. Now we can talk shop. Oh, with the like, life. like and subscribe too. Do like that and too. Subscribe yes. too. So it's been it's been a fun fun week. It we did one last week, right? Episode yes. seventeen was last week. We missed a week there. It's been busy. I've been all over the state, traveling back and forth. That's almost over. This is actually one. Of, I'm here in town with Ash. Obviously, obviously. He's here. I am here. <laughs> For those listening without seeing, we're in a room that is very similar, if not, dare say, identical to the scene in episode one of our laboratory. This is our B studio version of it. We have <laughs> is, two for when yeah. we want to do retakes. Yep, yep. The other one is actually down south in my my neighborhood. No, <laughs> uh, this is the one and only. No, so we're man. It's been it's been a fun week. I yeah. got to go to a midweek concert the other night. Tuesday night concert. Midweek in Orlando, um, and I finally got to see Moon Tooth. And I'm wearing wearing the shirt for those watching. Riffs best band shirt idea ever. Tiny little logo on the shoulder. <laughs> Riffs, and if I had to describe yeah. Moontooth as a band, it, man, it was riffs. They yeah. riff it out. Their guitar player, Nick, is like, I love him. That's what turned me on to the band in general. And I sent, I think I sent you a couple tracks. I sent, you know, Kurt and the I boys some I tracks. Have, I don't we talked about it, and then I brought up a band, Milk Tooth. That was it. Yeah, we were. Which is a different band Cody. that I like. Yeah, because yeah. this this came up on our top. And then five I forgot list. to look up Moon Tooth. So Moon Tooth, you know, they're it's hard to describe. They were on tour with uh, two super heavy heavy bands. Out there. It's called the the <laughs> the, the Callus Dow Boys. <laughs> is, is the name. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> and then the, they were the opener, and the headliner was uh, uh, Protest the Hero. Which okay. is protest hero has been around for a long time, like a screamo post screamo metalcore. Protest you know. the hero and defy the tyrant coming yeah, yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on tour next fall, twenty twenty four. Look out with Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> so, well, it's it's a it's a crap story for like the beginning of the the night. So this was one of those deals. I live an hour east of Orlando. The show's in Orlando, 
And I got an app on my phone. It's called like the Bands in Town app or whatever. Just like automatically oh. links me into all of the the, the sh local shows. It's really cool. If, yeah. Like you should get it, and then yeah. you, you can follow the bands you follow. You find out when they're playing and all that. Because nice. I was super bummed out that I missed the the Headbangers Boat, which is a cruise, and I live right next to the cruise port. But I found out the day the cruise left. That is like Lamb of God, Mastodon, um, you know, uh, Hatebreed, all oh, of these wow. awesome bands on a boat, it, playing shows every day on the boat. What? And you could like, do that, right? Because you don't get sick. You don't get motion sick. No, right? no, no, not on a big boat. See, I couldn't go on a cruise. My, I, I bet you sick. could because it's a big boat. But well, so it was. It was. But the bands in town app is where I found out about Moontooth coming to play at, um, it was at the, the Abbey is where it was listed in the Abbey. Okay. The Abbey's a venue in downtown Orlando. Okay. Totally unfamiliar with the area, I'd never been there before. And so I bought the tickets and it was three tickets. It was, it was me, Amber and Kyron. And we, we drove out there. And now I had saw a few things online, just kind of casually looking at the shows and the, it had listed the Abbey it had also listed level 13 and it also listed something else. And I figured that I had just kind of in the back of my mind figured it's one of those venues similar to like what uh, uh, Club La Vila used to be back in the day where there's multiple things inside of a larger event like space. Like multiple stages or like multiple, multiple like, rooms? Like rooms, yeah, okay. yeah. That's kind of just what I thought and yeah. didn't, didn't think anything else of it. So, Which we, Legacy is kind of like that to some extent. Legacy is like right? that. Right, I mean, it's got like, the multiple they have, chambers. They, they have the music hall, they have the tiki outside, yeah. tiki out back outside, then they have the, I forget what they call the other room, but it's another rock is room. Is it officially there. called Legacy on the River? Legacy at the Riverfront. At the Riverfront. The Legacy Bringing that Riverfront river aspect That's back. The, so guys, you can go there and check out. Best town. Tallahassee shows. venue to see shows but so anyway to just make shout it, to, out to make this story short <laughs> I drove an hour to get to the Abbey where the the event was held at and I show up and there's like a, a table and it's a a uh, political thing like this guy's the voting for uh vote for this guy for mayor and I was like this is a weird thing to be out in front of a a rock, rock show, show on yeah. a Tuesday night, it's weird. And I, I paid $20 to park at the parking space yeah. next door to this place. So we got there, I was like, that's a weird thing. And I walked inside and I felt like I was at work because there's nothing mm. but a bunch of old white guys in business casual uh, schmoozing <laughs> around in here. And it was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> This is not a show. I was like, am I in the wrong? And it's like, this is the Abbey. I went outside and they're like, hey, you're looking for the rock show, aren't you? I was like, yeah, where is it? I think it's down around the corner. I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I literally, a, a guy pulled up, looked just like me, you know, black t-shirt looking. Hey, is this, is this the wrong place? I said, don't go in there. Don't go in there. <laughs> There's nothing to see in there. Yeah. And then I found out. They switched venues. The mayor of oh, Orlando, wow. the mayor of Orlando, or whoever this guy was, kicked the 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 rock show out of the Abbey at his function. But it was great. The he really pop, was the instigator of them I, not getting to I, perform. I, there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, that's I'm not just a good, saying that. That's not a good direction to get. No, 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 no. It's not going to get my vote. Yeah. <laughs> What's this guy's name? Shout the, out. Uh, I have no idea. No idea. What, whoever the mayor of Orlando is, it might have been that guy. Well, a know. guy running. It might have been the guy running for mayor. I have no yeah, idea. Okay. I wasn't worried about. I'm that. ready to bash some names. I too. just wanted to see the show, so oh, I yeah. found out. Oh, oh, oh! It's at level 13. Where is it at? Oh, it's 16 miles away. I was like, I want to see Moontooth. Moon, Jeez, Moon, 16, Moon, miles 16 miles away. 16 miles away. Moontooth is from Long Island, New York, so this is not a like regular thing. To you have, didn't already have, have tickets. Them. I had tickets on my phone. I bought the tickets. You bought the tickets on your phone. You did not receive a notification. I the didn't show receive a moved. notification that it was moved. It's crazy. So it's seven. It's quarter after seven, which is when the show is supposed to start. And I'm yeah. like, I want to see Moontooth. Anyways, we drove over there, and the place was great. It was a strip mall. Like an empty retail space in a strip mall, like where, uh, almost like where a Dick's would be, like a sporting good. That's the first thing he thinks of. Of course. Um, but it wasn't. It was an empty room and it had a stage and there was a makeshift bar in there. And okay. it was, it was the, da, the, the, the callous Dow Boys. I can't ever say that. Yeah, Callous <laughs> Dow Boys. Callous Dow Boys. Callous Dow Boys. And they, I saw their last song. They absolutely crushed it. And okay. I, and then I went. And Moontooth came on, and it was 
absolutely phenomenal. And I'll say a uh, 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 shout out to Moontooth and shout out to Johnny, the vocalist from Moontooth, because every it's Tuesday night, they're not the heaviest band. They're like, he's like, yeah, Orlando, I know you guys know how to dance. Let's see some dancing. And like people say, it, they're, they're, they're so good. I'm just like smiling in the side, yeah. like, like giggy because I know how good this is. And it's just yeah. people, it's the metal show and they're not yeah, the yeah. metal band, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. And so John said, hell no, I'm going to come out there with you guys. So he got, he's got a microphone on the cable, but he had like the, the thousand fifty foot cable, you yeah. know, he like, he threw it out on over the thing. He jumped out onto the ground and he walked out into the middle of all the people. And he said, I'm going to ask you guys, Orlando, I'm going to ask you guys to sit down for this one. And I'm like, sit down. He's like, yeah, sit, sit down. I'm like, ah, I mean, so he asked like, to, to dance on a different song. He's no, not, he was, dance. Before that, no, he, wanted, he wanted people to dance. He wanted people to dance. Then he jumped out. Yeah. And now he's got people sitting down. And he told the band, he was like, hold on, keep keep going. It's like the intro to whatever song. Yeah. He's like, keep going. So he says, sit down. So he had the whole standing room floor sit down. And I'm like, then, sounds, then, then they now, start the song. Okay. And I'm like, the floor wasn't disgusting. I'm, I'm thinking, it's and I'm like, like I, I told Kyle, I'm like, I'm not sitting on the floor. I was like, okay. I'm not sitting down. I said, yeah. I'm not sitting down. Yeah. And so I did like a deep squat for a minute. Yeah. And they started the song. The fucking song they started is a song called Alpha Howl. Okay. Okay. Now, when you're a band and you have, if you write a song called Alpha Howl. Yeah. It's pretty bitching. It's yeah. like, it's like my favorite song they do just about. Okay. And I'm like, I'll be fucked if I'm going to sit down for Alpha <laughs> Howl. I'm like, yeah. I'm standing up like, what, the band's up there? And he's just singing it. And yeah. dude, when they got done with the song, he said, Orlando, that wasn't very fun, was it? Sitting down at the rock show. He yeah. said, "He said, how about we get up and move around and get some dancing going on the uh, next okay. one? How about that? I was like, oh, he said, it was epic. I was like, wow. got them all Work to sit that down. Crowd. Worked it. You hear that front there. man? That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You Johnny. make fuckers sit down and then you get them if back they up don't, and make them dance. If they don't dance for you on song one, make them sit down for song two. <laughs> That's a, By a the new time maneuver, song three comes out, they're ready to dance. Yeah. All right. No, that was a good time. That's it cool, really man. Was. That's great. And I, I was, I was, we were just talking about Moontooth the other day. It, it was my in my top five. And I felt, right. Yeah. I felt so accomplished, so lucky that it worked out. Like, yeah. oh, they were coming. The app. I was like, and I almost missed them with the whole mayor of Dipshitville running. At well, the app. sixteen miles. That's a hell of a relocation, especially if it's like the day of. And obviously. Yeah. Even if a notification did go out for your ticket, I mean, it was, what, one notification too late? You did I, not know. You're driving I, I to never, the... Yeah, I never got a notification. That's Amber was Amber was extremely upset about yeah. the lack of a notice. She said, you yeah. didn't get an email? You didn't get an email? I'm like, I don't know. I, I get yeah. a lot of emails, and I, I, miss, I miss emails. Like, I'm not, junk email. I'm just yeah. curious for the app's sake. I mean, they should know, you know, because... I think that's part yeah, of the it was, integrity it was, of the app. It was yeah. never listed on the app as being. Oh, how did you buy else. the ticket? Where did you buy the ticket? So that the app had through sent, the venue the or app, through the app. The app had sent me to a third-party site where I Got bought it. the ticket, and I honestly I bought it several weeks ago, and then it was it was hard to even go back and find the original, you know, ticket. Tic yeah, the, mm. the signal chain where I got the ticket, mm. but you know who won't neglect to tell you about a change in venue. Is the legacy at the riverfront here in Tallahassee? Andrew tell and Shane will, will not relocate because they are the venue, not the event holder. But they are the event holder too. <laughs> <laughs> they stick to their guns around there. They don't relocate on a dime like. So, yeah. so that, that's, been my, that's been my week. That's my, I have an exci cool. exciting week next week too. More concerts. Because, well, another thing I did, too, is we have our business cards, the Cue the Muses business cards. So the sound guy for Moontooth got one first, and then Johnny, then Nick got one, and then the drummer mm -hmm. got one, the bassist got one. And in when, when Protest Hero came on, Super Heavy Band, Mosh Pit broke out immediately. Uh, my, Kyron was there with me. He's 14. He's my son. And 
he he got in the pit. So I said, oh, I, I better get in there. Yeah. So I, you know, hand my glasses to Amber, take my hat off. I start, you know, oh, man, I'm stretching. <laughs> you started stretching. I before. stretched, <laughs> I stretched it out, lim oh. limbered up, you know. And he's already in the pit. Kyra's already <laughs> in the pit. You know? I'm like, so I this get in the there. the pace of being yeah, our yeah. age at this I'm point. like, I'm not going to pull something. I go in there. And it was a great time. And I have video of him. They, they started circle pitting in there mm. for Protest the Hero. And Kyron loves it. Just, he, it's like his element. Yeah, I mean, when we went to see Polyphia together, which was still, at this point, almost, well, I guess four or five months ago. Yeah. But I, Kyron I headed straight for that pit, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, it, it's funny, man. I mean, Kyron's 14. He's 14, and he's not a big kid. He's, he's not, not a big, big kid, and he's like, but, I mean, you know, he's heading, you know, straight into it. He's not intimidated about it at all. And it's yeah. not like there was, there was a lot of big people in there. Yep. It's, he, yeah. he, he eats it up. But that's that's the beauty of it. You know, there was one guy I felt like kind of, you know, sometimes you get that one guy kind of wants to single people out. And he, yeah. he, got, he got me. I don't really know if it was on purpose. But what happened I was in the pit, kind of like, then you get out of the pit and you're like, oh, okay, I need, need a breather. And Kyron was there and I got out with him. And then the, the guy hit me like a late hit. It's what it felt felt uh, like he yeah. was in a bit with me. And then I, I got out and then the late hit came and he knocked me into Kyron. And mm. I felt like it was a little bit on purpose. So yeah, I, like. I kind of found him when he got out of the pit yeah. and I kind of ran up to him and bear hugged him. Yeah. And then I kind of threw him back into the pit. Okay. Like, all the way across yeah. the pit, yeah. and, and that was a fun time. Yeah. yeah, it was. Everybody was smiling. Okay, I got him back. It wasn't an aggressive thing, but it was yeah. definitely a. No, you're not done yeah, yet. You yeah. late hit me. I'm gonna bring you back in here. Right, you don't right. get to catch your breath either. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, good. It's good times. Then, um, next week. Yeah. Down there, there's Bush on Tuesday, and then... Glycerine. Yeah, Glycerine. Glycerine. The Glycerine's bands. Bad Moon Water Guy. Bad Moon's Water Guy. I don't know. What, I've never <laughs> what he known say? what he says there. Bad I always would sing along. I'm like, Bad Moon Water Guy. As she guy. pulls around me. Yeah, I write all my lyrics. But that being island. said, I'm making fun of it, but there's no doubt in middle school, I loved it. Oh, man. I loved it. I was a it's big. Like there, there were two albums during in middle school that came out of theirs, and both of them I bought. Both of them I listened to like crazy. I also was way into No Doubt around that time. Yes. I loved No Doubt. That, I was in was, love with Gwen Stefani. That was the, there was them too, right? For a while there, it was. Yeah, it was, ironically, yeah. I think that's why it popped in my head to bring up No Doubt as well. Not only was it like albums that I was jamming to through middle school, a couple of. Oh, yeah. I, I listen to other stuff too, but uh, yeah, they were together as a couple for whatever stint of time. But hundred hundred percent guilty of totally jamming. The, I'm just a girl in the world. Oh fuck da, da, da. yeah! And then the spider webs. Well, yeah, so, I mean, so I, I'm the who I know I'm walking in the spider webs. I was all over. I like the whole album, Tragic Kingdom. I mean, yeah. when they're the self-titled song, was that the name that? Don't speak. Don't speak. Yeah, yeah that yeah, shit was yeah. good, man. So good, and their their good. drummer is so good. Is he? He's one of those like kind of unsung, underrated drummers. That drummer from No Doubt was like he was bad. Ass. You know, a lot still is. I'm sure that's the thing. Is like a lot of times in these bands that are ultimately not flashy, the musicians that are sitting <laughs> underneath the hood. Yeah. Are oftentimes kind of insane. They just don't, that's not the music that they're playing, but they are capable of doing stuff way beyond that skill set level. And um, yeah, it's like interesting. Playing, when playing, they cut playing loose. down for the purpose of what the band is. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, I mean, they're a lot of times in those situations, you know, they're just executing. I mean, let's just face it, these are hook driven pop rock songs, you know, that. Ultimately, don't leave yeah. much room for flash. They're not trying to be. They're trying to be catchy, and it's mostly vocal. I mean, I don't think that there's any... Like, the guitar solo on a No Doubt album was short, yeah, I, if existing at all. And But I feel like with No Doubt, and I need to revisit it because I don't want to 
talk out of turn and be, yeah. be incorrect. But Again, my, Gwen, Gwen yeah. Stefani was in my, love with her. Yeah. Right? I just need to hear you say that, too. No, right? yeah, not... yeah, totally. Gwen Stefani was there, and it was like, oh, wow. Like, that's one of the first, like, one of the first female vocal fronted bands where yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm an adolescent young man, and this is a, <laughs> I like. <laughs> I, I like this rock music. Well, I had a thing for Paul Abdul. Yeah. Oh yeah, Janet Jackson. Yeah, me. right. We talked yeah, about yeah, this yeah, in yeah. other episodes. If you guys have been following along, yeah. we're consistent. Yeah, we, we had do, our we, childhood. Yeah, I also like Sandra Bullock. Now she's not still, right, but still, I still like Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little different. It's now. hard. It's you know because it's, it's. I mean, she's. I'm sorry, Sandra. No, it's. I'm it's, married. I mean, I don't think about it that way anymore. I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah. I'm unavailable. Yeah. I have kids. Yeah. Back off. So far. <laughs> <laughs> I had a poster of you on my wall though, as a teenage boy. Oh, she's watching. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Sandra. By the way, we have a show. You yeah. are welcome to be in it. I don't know if you sing, but you could try out if you want to. She could give audition it a whirl. for a supporting role. You could definitely act in it. <laughs> On that part, you could lead the frontier. Uh, but as far as the singing goes, I don't know. We'll see. Well, what, what was the recent movie she was in at the very end? Like a cameo. Oh, it was that cool movie about the train with um, Speed Four. <laughs> not the boat. Not the bus. The, boat, the sequel was such a bad. <laughs> I never problem. saw it. I, I mean, never it had saw dude, it. The dude Michael or whatever from Lost Boys. I don't know his real name. You know, remember the main, like the older brother from Lost Boys that was the cool, you know, of, <sighs> oh, older brother of Corey really. Feldman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he grew up to be an actor for in a few big movies. And he was the he was he the, was in a couple of good. He ones. was the Keanu Reeves Sleepers, replacement guy. In yeah, Speed he two. was the main guy for for Speed Two. It was the boat. I don't think Sandra Bullock was in the second one at she all. She was in the second one. Oh, she one. was with yeah. him. But I mean, it's a boat. It's like, guys, it's called Speed, and it's a cruise it's ship. A cruise <laughs> boat, <laughs> yeah. Break, man. And so, and what was what was great? That's gr- the twist. What was great about the first Speed? Okay. Oh, Keanu Reeves was pretty good. Speed one kicked ass. Yes, Keanu Reeves is pretty good. Sandra Bullock, pretty good, very pretty. Keanu Reeves was amazing. Come on, the villain in Speed was Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Pop quiz, Dennis hot shot. Hopper. You got a bus yeah. going 40 mi- 55 yeah. miles per hour. That's what I'm saying. What's, going 32 miles per hour. What's the most memorable thing about Squeed? It's pop quiz, hot shot. It's Dennis <laughs> Hopper. It's you, not Keanu Reeves. Not you just called it Squeed. Squeed? Yeah, Squeed. It's, this, ain't, this ain't Squeed, too. Squeed 4. <laughs> it's a train now. <laughs> now it's anyway, a train. total side tangent. <laughs> the back movie to no was, doubt. It was uh, yeah, back to no doubt. And, yeah. and Bush and and the and the music that came out back. Our sons are hanging out. They're passing by. Off. They are. You're messing up the episode. Get out of here, kids. Go feed your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Go feed your mother. She's hungry. <laughs> Bring her some meat, though. Oh man. You never <laughs> get your pudding. So we got a we we had a we had a some we got some more guests lined up. We've got to work it out. I want to try and get um, the boys from from the group that we're working with right now, the Dave's Last Night guys. Okay. Up here, we're gonna do a spot with the other podcast that we wouldn't do a spot with the yeah. uh, the off the record guys. The show. The as show. They like to call it. They they do. They have a full blown show. Yeah. Jeremy has all the buttons and the whistles and all that's awesome. It, it literally does have the whistles, yeah. But the that that is um to promote the local thing, there's a big show coming up December 9th. Yes, yeah. Here in Tallahassee at the Legacy on the Riverfront, featuring half of the 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 po- Q the Muses podcast team. This half <laughs> The it's other half, huge. The other half is is. I'll be is there, definitely but I'm not playing. I'm there. not in the band. Um, this band. I mean, they're his band. But Dave's last night. But I'll be cheering from the sidelines. And it's it's what we're gonna do is we're gonna I we requested this. We want to play first. Like this is our first show. Yeah. Just because we're made up of people from bands that have been here, like. We want to open. We want to open the show at like 5 o'clock. Is Kyron playing bass? Kyron is playing bass. His son is playing bass. 14 years old. He's playing bass in Dave's Last Night, our first show. David Rowe is flying in from Dallas to be here for the first night, for the last night. Dave's first last night. Dave's last... Band's named f- after him. 
Yeah, the band is kind of a, a dedication to Dave. Fighting Giants, David sings for Fighting Giants, David sings in Cue the Muses in the song Afraid from episode two. And Fighting Giants Cody. is to expand, and we did a visual EP together and, that you can watch for free online. And it is a pretty bitchin' video with it was karate really cool, and, man. and time traveling microphones, and, and yeah. we kill Kurt Rogers. Don't dead. give away the amazing plot. We kill him dead. Kill him dead. But, <laughs> Kenny was his nickname on that set. Kenny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we him. kept killing Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that the show December 9th is going to be phenomenal. And God, so great. I'm giving away. That's a, my birthday weekend. My birthday is December 8th. Hell so yeah, hell yeah. So I'm going to go to your show for my birthday. Awesome. And I'm going to. I'll get you something for your birthday. I'm not going to tell you what. I'm going to get you something. Better be really good. But the first 20 people that show up paying before the first band plays, gets a free dick pic. One of my signature dick pics. <laughs> it's an actual pic. <laughs> Guitar pic. I've got one. Yeah. I've got some too, they're in the car. So the first 20 people that come in the door pay to get in before the first band gets a free dick pic on the counter with my name. <laughs> it's way too dark over there. You'll never see this. It's green. The autofocus is set up to, uh, it but has, it's a pic. It's a pic. It says dick pic on it. It's amazing. It's genius. Yeah. And, and what we're trying to do is get enough people in early to get a little crowd surfing going at the legacy. Of oh, the front. I'm not doing that. No, but Kyron is. Not with this back. If if enough Kyron has, if, that's a good if enough people show up, what's going to happen is Kyron may or may not know this, but if enough people show up and we get some crowd surfing in there, what we're going to do is after the last song, Kyron's going to take the bass off, and my vocalist Tim is going to throw him into the crowd. Oh wow! And crowd surf. There's been it's it's been a a, a depressingly scarce activity in Tallahassee, the crowd, the crowd surfing. Uh. And I think it needs, it really needs to make a comeback. And, but you have to have enough people in there. You, you have, have to have enough, have enough bodies in there. It gets dangerous when there's not enough bodies. Oh, it's super dangerous. I have seen people get seriously hurt. Yeah. But if we get enough of the right people in there and get it done properly, we're going to, we're going to do it. That's why we're, we're monikering ourselves as a whale core band. Right. Okay. Whale You're officially, core. Okay. Well, you guys are classified as whale core. We're classifying too? ourselves as okay. whale core, okay. and and my new classification, whale core, is coined by Bill from Mastodon and Joe from Gojira, because they both have albums that are extremely successful with whales on the cover. And that's really it. And they coined the term whale core. I'm going deeper with whale core in that. I want our audience in the show to resemble a violent sea. And I want the bodies to be metaphorically representing whales in the sea coming up for air. Whale core. Whale core. Florida whale core. So all that's going down on December 9th at Legacy. On your birthday weekend. On my birthday weekend. And I'll just be witnessing the whole thing go by and I'll open my big present from Dick on stage. The big present <laughs> on stage. <laughs> you see this? See, so, this is how you set up getting a good gift from people. You put the pressure on, you create the situation, they got to live up. Now he's nervous. He wasn't nervous about the show, but now he's nervous about this gift. He's got to be very creative. I want it to be thoughtful. And I want it sounds to be expensive. Like, sounds like, sounds like, sounds like he's trying to get in my pants. Ah, uh, on stage. Wait a minute. <laughs> Finally, the time has so, come. So, I just needed so, people. I'm an exhibitionist. So, guys, you're listening. We're 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 talking <laughs> shit. This is banter, but we're we're promoting the Q the Muses series. This is the Q the Muses podcast. I got here early tonight. Got to see a little bit of the 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 special. Episode three that Ash has been working on, Snippet. and I gotta say the there there there's an actor in episode three, Bofa, both Aaron Bofa Jet, amazing human being, bass player for Fighting Giants. He's so fucking funny. <laughs> Uh, it's, I'm excited. Like so, yeah. so, we have two episodes out now. Two songs, yeah. two episodes. Two full episodes available for free to watch. Available for free to watch. They're, 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 they're not up streaming 
yet. They're not back up on streaming yet. And to add in... Well, as indi individual songs, we don't have it on Spotify. Yeah, right sorry, now, sorry. So you can't But the music us, videos are up. Yeah, you cannot find us YouTube. on Spotify, but you can listen on YouTube and yes. on the website. And on the website. And the web, but the website is linked to a YouTube, right? You watch it yeah, on YouTube. Ultimately, it's a, it's a when, widget for YouTube. On the right. Website. When you watch it on the website, you're you're watching the YouTube link. The advantage to the website is that you can sign up for an email list, which gives you some access to some additional things, of which is about to have more stuff. So we're gonna one of the things that we're gonna do when we release episode three. If you're on the email list, you'll automatically one you'll be notified first that it, when the actual release date's coming, you'll get to see the trailer first. And also, you'll have uh, access for a free download of the instrumental version of not the new song, um, but our previous really? two songs. Yeah, the ones awesome. that are out now, we have instrumental versions of those. And they really do, it's a different experience listening to it instrumentally. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so you get a free download of that, and you can check it out that way. Um, That's going to be awesome, guys. I, yeah. I, would, I'd, I would love to hear, um, like, user submissions, too. Like with oh, the like coming up versions. with lyrics? Yeah, That'd yeah. Be fun. I mean, you know, we 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 work really hard with the vocalists on on these songs, and we worked equally hard creating these songs without vocals. And I'm I'm all about the idea. Once we release the instrumental versions, I'm all about. It. If you guys if you guys got some chops, got some ideas, let's hear some user submissions. That'd be fun. Yeah, I think, I, I we might even kind of share stuff. some of those takes. Even if you just want to get on there and just. <laughs> The whole time. That'd be beautiful. As I'll long as it's in it. tune, I just want to make sure it's in key. Yeah. Yeah. So, we can drop auto, C. You can auto tune that. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be so, awesome. Yeah, it'd be cool. And we'll, we'll have other stuff. We're going to come up with more things. You know, this is one of those things where there's so much effort to create the product to get it out. But once we have more of it out, we can hone in on more fun, extra bonus stuff like blooper reels and, <laughs> you know, like additional little giveaways and free downloads and snippets of this and that. It's just, it's so much effort to get the, the physical episodes done. We have four filmed, all right? We're working on the edit for three right now, the third one. And the fourth one will be out next year. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a doozy. I mean, both these last two episodes are longer than the first two episodes. You know, they actually, mm -hmm. the, this third episode has more stuff to it than either of the other two. So that in itself is making it take a little bit longer. And then on the fourth episode, well, I'm not going to say why, but it's, it's a doozy. It's going to require the most editing out of all of the episodes. We, we definitely try to close out the season or album with a bang. Yeah, it is a, it is a true finale. <clears throat> it is a finale. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, I, and it's painful sitting on the footage this long that I've never gotten to look at. Can you imagine how much effort has gone into this yeah. over several years? And I haven't even gotten to look at the footage with him. All I got to do was back up terabytes of multiple days of hard filming, 16 hour days. And- um, Don't you, don't you still have to film something on one of them? Oh, well there's like, yeah. There's one <laughs> last uh, filming session that we're gonna do for the close out of episode four. Well, is there a performance take missing still or is that done? That is not done. And there's a performance take that I got to get from one more player on. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. talking. I'm so talking about something else. Yeah. There's yeah. like, there's ultimately to finish out the whole season, there's like roughly four more filming sessions that have to happen. And a couple of those are all dayers. And a couple of those are just like half day kind of things for some yeah. pickup stuff. So it's that close. Well, and I think if, if we're in, we're still, we're still doing the same plan without giving anything away for the, for, the, for the ending. Yes. I think that is an opportunity for local folks, local musician friends in Tallahassee. If you guys want to be a part of this and be, physically be, be in, in it as an in extra, the episode, you know, but. In the episode, not, not speaking or anything, but just there with us hanging out, yeah. this is the chance. Let us know where we are. Cameo moment. We haven't scheduled it yet, but we've got some beautiful weather coming. 
Beautiful well, I mean, I'll be honest in saying we'll probably next end year. up filming it next year, yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Next year, like maybe spring. <laughs> the weather is going to be good <laughs> next year. March, right around my birthday, is usually <laughs> we'll the do it for your birthday. best weather. We'll do it for your birthday. See, my birthday present will be finally finishing. Because, you know, my body type is different now since we filmed. Yeah, you've we're well. We're both morphing when it yeah. takes this long. It's interesting editing this footage and seeing us <laughs> uh, a little bit younger, you know. Um, yeah. But not yeah, much. We are, to me, it's pretty older. similar. Well, I, I I fluctuated. I was really I was very I cut and I was very thin uh -huh. for filming. Yeah. Then I kind of started putting on pounds, and now I'm back at you know I'm back working out healthy way, but yeah. I'm, I'm at like a 180. Yeah. healthy weight right now when yeah, we yeah. filmed this i was at like a 166 healthy yeah. weight right 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 i yeah. was working out still too but i was yeah, doing yeah. much more cardio right, much right, more right. much more active stuff now it's yeah. not so much cardio building more trying to build more muscle mass and yeah so 15 pounds is 15 pounds. oh yeah no totally i can see yeah. it when we see when i look at these episodes i'm like man yeah. I'm a different size dude. <laughs> like a different build now. <laughs> yeah. And it's like if we, whenever we do some pickup shots or whatever, it's like it's supposed to be <laughs> yeah. back to and back. I love it's the that. Same, like, yeah. Hold on, this is me yeah. <laughs> from from then. That's such a reality, and uh, and that's something that uh, you run into. Well, on other movies and stuff with child oh, yeah. actors, you know, a lot of times pickup shots is a pretty common thing that has to happen in the industry. When you have child performers, it's drastically different you know a few months goes by especially if it's half mm -hmm. a year you need to do pickup shots and this person looks oh, yeah. older you can see some stuff you know I mean you can also see people fluctuate in weight there's like I don't know why this one standout thing popped out to me in my mind right now to, to mention but it's like I think it was the uh, Justice League movie or something which was terrible but Ben Affleck appears as Batman in it. And then at the end, it's like there's this add-on scene. And it was like so obviously this pickup shot. And um, he is just dramatically either skinnier or heavier. I'm trying to remember which way it was. I thought he was pretty was. big for the Batman he was like, role. I think he was pretty like in a big. I've and never then, seen that movie. I've never seen any of those. It was sucked. It was really yeah. bad. That's why. That's unfortunately, <laughs> you don't need to see it. But I mean, it was like, he looked like a completely different person. It's crazy, you know, I mean, he was right? just way, I think he was way skinnier. It was like weird. I think so. because Or think he was way overweight. Like fat in the face. I can't remember which way it was. It was one of the two. But it was like he was like Mac so from All Is Sunny yeah. in, in that season where he just started getting fat, cultivating mass. Well, and it's like you'll see that some some actors do fluctuate. Ben Affleck is one of those actors that fluctuates dramatically yeah, yeah, with his yeah. weight between roles, and not for the purpose of the role. Something either. about like, Batman, maybe because Christian Bale's another yeah. one. Like, like now, huge. Christian Bale's hundred percent intentional. Whatever that, like that dude. Is yeah. physically doing it for a purpose. Yeah, you know? for the role. He's doing he it. He really the does. Role. That guy is like, shh. he's a method actor. He'll mm -hmm. be the character through the course of the movie. Daniel Day Lewis is another method actor. Daniel, Daniel Day Lewis, Lewis doesn't great. do. He's amazing. He doesn't do. I think the physicality that Christian Bale goes through for for yeah. the purpose of his roles. But and Daniel Day Lewis is an odd bird because he ended up giving up all of Hollywood, and I believe he's a shoe cobbler. Wow. Did you know this? No. He went, he hasn't been in a movie in like a decade. I wondered that. I he just he got okay. way into making shoes. He makes like these crazy leather shoes, I think. How do I get me He's a, a pair shoe of cobbler. Day <laughs> Good luck trying to afford a pair of those bad boys. Man, I bet. I don't know. I've never actually looked up the shoes, but I know, that's what I've heard, if, and that's pretty any, wild. If anybody out there has a pair of Daniel Day Lewis's cobbled shoes <laughs> co send, us cobbled a, send us a picture is that the right term i don't know i heard he was a shoe if cobbler, you're a shoe so cobbler would you then be the cobbler of shoes would they would your shoes be cobbled, They'd be cobbled. In, in a their cobblestone in a <laughs> workshop somewhere i don't know but that, i mean you, you you hear that doesn't it just make him sound like um wow so like, cool what an yeah. eccentric badass <laughs> yeah it's so cool um, and, and yeah. um another one is uh and you know, he's a little controversial, but Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, he's Shia LaBeouf. Well, he, what did he? He had some bad stuff happen. Yeah. That he doesn't act anymore at all. Like he's he. he Does he not at all? I thought he came back. He did a, a comeback role, and I I thought it was had a message in it or something that he, was like. I haven't seen his there. movie Honey Honey Boy. I yeah, I did not see that was. either. That's yeah. the one that he plays his own father in it. He wrote it, uh -huh. and he wrote it when he was in rehab. And uh -huh. 
And then he, he actually did a fascinating podcast segment of uh, the podcast called The Real Ones. Yeah. With, I always forget his name. He was, I do too. He played the Punisher and he was in The Walking Dead. Um, cool dude. But they were in yeah. a movie together. And the, 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 the conversation in the podcast is fascinating. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a Shia LaBeouf fan of the man in his, who he is in person. Um, but listening to him talk about what happened to him mm. and he's like full wholeheartedly admits that he completely screwed up. Yeah. That he like ate shit at, at life and, you know, and deserved every bit of negative Mm. impact that happened to him because of what he did and what he did to other people. But mm. aside from that, his his role in the movie Fury. I had never seen Fury. I saw it. With I, Tom Hardy, right? Yeah, Tom Hardy's in it and Brad Pitt and um mm. the the guy, the the guy the real yeah, one's yeah. host. I forget That's his name. That's where they connected. Yeah. And so he's talking Shia LaBeouf method acted yeah. that movie for for his character yeah. and he pulled his own tooth out. He Which pulled, is pretty intense. Pulled a tooth out, never no, showered no. the entire time they were filming because they're supposed to be army guys in a tank. Oh, and, God. And, and, and That'd like, be painful. And actually. he, like, admitted, like, yeah. he's apologizing to his former <laughs> co-star. You know, you know yeah. I was, it was disgusting, and yeah. he just did this thing. But it was, it was a really pretty good movie. Yeah. I'm not going to say it wasn't, like, my favorite I thought it was, movie. it was, like, good. I wanted it. It had more potential to be better than it was, and I don't think it was anything on the acting um, or the script. It's just like the overall, I think the arch of the story, the arc of the story was just a little, it wasn't, it was a little dry. Yeah, kind of they, they, they did everything they could with what they had, and I think yeah. it excelled because of who was yeah. in it. Performances yeah, yeah. were great. Some of the performances were great, and Tom Hardy <laughs> is always interesting. I love Tom Hardy's acting. I've heard that he's a... Uh, Intense his, to work with on set, though. His 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 pilot character in Dunkirk was so good. Yeah, yeah. Even just he filmed the whole thing had to be in a like a mock up cockpit. You yes, know? yes. Acting from a a, a, a mask. Well, that's but, Bane. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christopher yeah. Nolan yeah. used him in Batman, and he was covered in a mask again. It's yeah. like Nolan, quit covering <laughs> this guy's face. Yeah, up. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. Yeah, he's great. But he was also in Inception. Which was another Nolan movie. Nolan yep. loves Tom using Tom Hardy, and yep. he was killer in Inception. Inception yep. is one of my favorite movies. I yep. mean, I love Super, that movie. Such good rewatch value too, because oh, it takes yeah. it. It just takes more and more effort to understand little bits and pieces yeah. more of it and to follow it right. When you watch it again, you have a new perception of what what was happening in certain scenes that you had no idea yeah. to know. And um, Nolan's movies are, are that way. I feel like uh, and Nolan's one of my top five favorite directors. Top top three, really. I mean, him, mm. Tarantino's another one. But um, I heard Tarantino's retiring no, from, well, from directing. Tarantino is, he's said for years now, he's only going to make 10 films. And the last film that he makes, he's going to make whenever he wants because he's made nine of them. But he said that he's not against possibly doing some level of TV. So, or we call it TV, but let's say, you know, a season of a show, whether that be for some streaming platform. He's not opposed to that. But as far as movies goes, he's going to do 10. That's it. And he doesn't, when I, when I heard his last talk after Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I thought was amazing. I loved it. God, I loved what it. What did people get mad about it. that movie for? Was it, was it because they, the, Brad um, Pitt beat up Bruce Lee? In the movie. There was there were two things. One, yeah, the whole there was a Bruce Lee controversy for that movie because they, they he did a character of uh, some kind of moment that actually happened between <clears throat> that Sorry. real stuntman in real life <clears throat> and Bruce Lee. And the reality is, is that um, you know that stunt guy was actually um, really well versed in jujitsu. He was one of the first people in America that this is my understanding that knew jujitsu. I've heard Rogan talk about this. I think it was Gene LaBelle or something like that was his name. And the, the um, character Brad Pitt plays yes, in the movie. Yes, and yeah. that's kind of a, it's, it's like kind of loosely based on that guy. Okay. And although in, in that scene, Brad Pitt does not do any jujitsu, but no, just, I thought the just scene just was hilarious. He just shit out of it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it was, yeah, I'm a Bruce Lee fan. <clears throat> Me too. I am a Bruce Lee Me fan. Me too. And th watching that scene really, I didn't, I really didn't get a 
upset. I imagine Bruce Lee's family would. <laughs> That's know? who got upset about it apparently, and uh, they said it was inaccurate. And it's like I don't, I don't know. But then I heard Quentin Tarantino talk about it, and I can't remember all the details, but flat out, he actually. <laughs> He's not that much of a Bruce Lee fan. I yeah. didn't realize. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's like, he kind of thinks that I don't want to misquote him. There was some element about him not having the respect for Bruce Lee that a lot of people actually had. And that I think apparently, I think he was kind of intense with a lot of the stunt guys or something. I might be stepping out of bounds here on, on remembering this well, old interview. I, I do know that, I, I, and it was, it was, it's weird and I had to fact check it and I fact check it and when I fact check it, it's, I'm, I'm remembering that I ended up finding it was correct and it was that Bruce Lee had an operation to remove his sweat glands because sweating on film didn't look good when he did martial arts. Is that and what that, killed him? And that... That what I've that never heard. This. Is what sent his body into a tailspin and caused the aneurysm from from his body overheating and not being self cooling. Where did you read die. this? I have never I heard this. I swear, we need to talk. Uh, like, and I've like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't say this. Like, I I heard it. Yeah. I saw it somewhere, and yeah. I said bullshit. Yeah. And then when I started digging on it, it seemed to be accurate. And I want, I want to dig again. When we get I done with the episode, yeah. <laughs> we'll get on the computer and do about, it. Because yeah. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. That was a weird, it's a weird thing, but it, seemed extra, it's, it seems like it's documented that it was actually real. I'm, I, I will have to look that up too, because I, I have not heard that. I know that there was the, the suspicion that it had to do with not mafia per se, but the disrespect of teaching Chinese Kung Fu to Americans was yeah. a big no-no. That was a big premise of um, Dragon and Bruce Lee's story with... Yes. Uh, um, but apparently that that movie was wildly inaccurate too. And it seems like... Well, yeah, he had a demon. He was like there's fighting like, at the end. Well, there's that <laughs> as well. But I think that there's like... there's mul As far as I understand it, no, I don't think there's an official... It's muddy. How Bruce Lee died is a muddy, there's yeah. a lot of versions of it. But what is weird is that his son died, Brandon Lee, on the mm -hmm. set of The Crow mm -hmm. via a gunshot from one of the guns. <clears throat> and it is weird that he died so young and in that scenario. And it makes you think- 33. Maybe Bruce there's some, yeah. And it's like, that almost feels like maybe somebody did take out his, him and then now his family, you know? I mean, it, it, it's just well, weird. Yeah, it, it is. It's definitely a conspiracy. I'm not saying that's the case, with, but it with, was weird. With Brandon, though, with Brandon Lee, what what happened, they have a they have a, a gun that has a, a cap load. Yes. And the, 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 the gun had a, a blank lodged in the barrel. Yeah. And the cap load is just a blank that makes a, a pop, yes. basically. And that gun was used, not knowing it didn't get checked before the scene. And not knowing. Essentially, that cap load was yeah. just enough to fire, just enough, just yeah. enough to get through the skin. It wasn't, yeah. well, I guess where I'm going is, it wasn't a full blown real bullet. Right, 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 right. It, it I didn't mean to misquote that. You're, yeah, you're it right. was, it was. But that's the same scenario with Alec Baldwin, correct? <clears throat> I'm not familiar with that. I've heard you know, about Alec Baldwin shot somebody, and they died, <laughs> and he's been uh, being. They've been trying to charge him with manslaughter, and then he finally beat the court case, and apparently it's being reopened again now. Wow. So this making this one western movie that he was still continuing and picking back up, his entire career has been absolutely screwed for the last two years since it happened. Yeah, and he's. I mean, it's questionable if it'll be recovered. It's supposed to be, you know, the argument is that he was neglectful on set and he put people in danger with some of the decisions that he made. I don't know the full story. I personally have loved Alec Baldwin. I think he's I love his work hilarious. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't know what the real, but <laughs> I, I do know that, that it's been a nightmare and he's been, uh, you know, they're trying to get him with manslaughter and 
It's uh, they're yeah. trying to reopen the case even now when he's just well, got passed. That's a, a terrible. It was the cinematographer, <laughs> female cinematographer. That's who got shot. She wasn't even in the. In she the wasn't film? even in the scene. So it was like a, a off shot. <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand exactly how it how it how it went down. But yeah. on all these notes about talking about Hollywood, I do believe as of you know I mentioned uh, the Actors Guild the has reached. An agreement, and that's going to be happening within the week. I haven't gotten to read the details on it. That's but awesome. Hollywood is about to be back together. It might be a slow start, but now we've got we had the Writers Guild a while ago. Now we've got the Actors Guild, and so Hollywood's about to be back and and happening again, but okay. quite behind. I'm excited because that I mean, the streaming platforms keep going. We talked about this before. They had enough. They had enough, um, you know, product to uh -huh. keep them sustained. Yes, yes. Through through the strike. Yeah. So I'm excited because I think you and I, I would like to figure out what we would have to do with our superb, <coughs> uncanny, cutting edge, classically trained acting skills to join the Screen Actors Guild. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me, I've, I'm getting over you guys infection. Want us? <coughs> would they would they take it? Um, do we want to? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I want to be in the Screen Actors Guild. What are you guys going to do for me? Yeah. Do you know what I'm bringing to the table? Do you know? Do you know what we're bringing to the table? Do you know I can literally do You two, think this is for sale? Two or three different sized voices from the same. I can talk that way and I can talk that way. This. Uh, so, so this no, I is... really, I really, this, I'm really getting to <laughs> yeah. something serious. Okay. I joined, I did join a platform called uh, Backstage, okay, which does um, voiceover work. Okay, like there's, and it, it I, I, I started it, and I'm, I'm trying to feel it out to see how, see how, you know, because there's, there's a lot of people on there, a lot of audition, a lot of jobs on there. I actually did get a job for a podcast scripted reenactment. Okay. And, and, okay. and did a voiceover for it. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, it wasn't a paid thing. This I was like you. a college project. I got gotcha. you. And but uh, looking into it more, there are paid gigs on there, and I think it would be fun. It, it's you know how it's always kind of been a dream, like to be able to do like voiceover stuff. For, for well, you know, so I have a production company called Rough Cut Productions. That's what really is the only reason we can do all this amazing work. Um, <coughs> and I literally every week for the last, like, it's just increased over the years, but at this point, every single week, I get at least two voiceover artists that uh, cold email me, letting me know about their services with their link. Mm -hmm. And it is saturated. I mean, it's hard, saturated. man. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, it's weird because there's so much, it, it is fun, it's a neat idea. And more and more people have the capability. More people have the capability and it's in a way, I, I hate for this to sound this way, but it is, it's kind of less and less needed. Because, yeah. because the majority of the style of videos that are being done where you would have access to that work that's not commercial content that's on mainstream TV, where they've already got the people that they're going to use for that. You know, you, you we're talking about people reaching out to independent production companies, yeah, offering their voice talent services. And the reality is that a lot of us owners just don't make videos like that. We yeah. Yeah, we yeah, are yeah. mostly getting our audio from the client themselves in mini doc style <laughs> setups. Yeah. And then oftentimes, if it's a scripted TV piece, there may not even be voiceover. Then on top of that, and I'm not saying that this is the case fully yet, but we're right, we're getting at the cusp of it, the AI ability to literally type in yeah. what you want said and then execute it by a human sounding and, voice is like, we're within the next one to two years, it could be discern indiscernible. It and could that, really get there. That's 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 a perspective that I wasn't really thinking about from kind of a corporate uh, production standpoint. Mm. When I say I would l I would be fascinated and completely happy to do voiceover work for fun. I'm talking about cartoons. Okay, yeah. I'm talking about um, yeah, yeah. Just like like like. 
animated animated voiceover work. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's more what I what I think of with with voiceovers, and I you know I think the animation. Um, What's the what's the right the animation class the animation yeah. district see, yeah what have you, um, it'd be harder for AI to kind of infiltrate that because oh no I think those, that there's plenty of room for, for real people there's with that. Gen, genuine characters character yeah. actors in voice actors I agree in in content. that's different that's like almost in the same vein <clears throat> regardless of it being comedy I would say it's it's just like you can't do yeah. voice a, uh, AI voices for stand up comedy yet. I don't yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. anywhere close. No. And there, you need real a, people there's to a act cadence, it. There's yeah. a cadence and a rhythm there. And there's a, there's, yeah. with stand-up comedy, there's also a visual thing. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. There's, there's so sure. many layers with stand-up. Yeah. Improvisational but comedy. But on cartoon stuff, you could get by on certain characters. Yeah. I think so. That, so there's, you have, you have informative work, which is kind of like what you're talking about with, with clients, with mm. products and commercial inform, work. Inform, I mean, commercial really, work. yeah. Then you have news, yeah. which is a different thing. There's a, a, like reading the news and I, you know, heard like, um, newscasters has its own accent now, like, like the news. There is a accent that is now not a real accent from anywhere. It Are we is, talking about like voice the voices of newscasters like like Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. It's so it is, fake. It is only it, unique to the news. It, yeah, it is it, not I mean, an accent it's from anywhere so in the world, guys. <laughs> yeah. Quit doing it. It's like it's it's become All the, the normal. independent media <laughs> is not doing it. And it's got way better numbers than you guys. It does. The, you yeah. know CNN I believe has an audience of on a given night, 40,000 people. Yeah, we talked about this. Right, and I mean, you put out one of the, these guys that are doing independent media on YouTube will generate that mm -hmm. in six hours and it's there to gather hundred, sometimes a million plays. And they're not talking like that. People, people want to hear from real people. People are I'm listening so to them because, yeah, because they're not, they're not acting. Yeah. They're, they're not being Just be a, a real person. person. Be yourself. That accent yeah. can, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> my it drives accent, me my, nuts. My accent. I couldn't be in the news. You hear it. The more I talk, the drier my throat's getting. Yeah, right you can't. You're it's already. Mm. You're already falling off the wagon. And on that note, See gentlemen that? and ladies, <laughs> we don't have a timer here. We've so got to be close to going. a freaking hour somewhere in there. You know what? I what still don't know. You're out of the light. Ah, oh, it's yeah. 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 All right, yeah. guys. Tune in. Cutemusics.com. Go to the website. Click on the YouTube video, like and subscribe. Go to our Facebook page, Cue the Muses Facebook page. On the upper right hand side, if you're on your cellular device, there's a kiosk button with three little dots. Hit those three little dots. It'll bring up a cue to invite your friends to like the page. Hit invite the friends, select all, send the invite, help spread the word If out. you like what we're doing. If you don't like what we're doing, then, then just do what Dick said. Do that. And tell all your friends how <laughs> awful it is, and that it sucks so bad they gotta watch it, and they gotta they gotta watch it at least three to six times to really to understand see how all terrible of, it all is. of the dumbassery and yeah. just how just 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 drag it through the dirt, and then put reviews on Google about it. Um, yeah, sounds good to me. All that, yeah, it's, <laughs> sounds like about what I would do if I hated something. Yeah. Guys, um, take care, and we'll be back uh, next week. We we'll tried to put out one a week. We're pretty good about it. So, Musecast podcast, Cue the Muses, we got that going on too. This is not the same as the sci fi scripted show, but uh, it's all in the same vein. We're, we're, it's all connected, and we're having fun talking about music, pop culture, That's news, right. and uh, you know, videos and actors and everything in between. And next we, week, we'll talk about drugs. Yeah, we can talk about drugs. I will talk about Bush because I'm going to go see. Yeah, he's going to go I'm see. I'm going to go Bush. see Gavin Rossdale next yeah. week. I'm going to give him a card. He's going to watch Cue the Muses and he's going to tell us it's the stupidest thing he's ever seen. I love it. But then he's going to tell all of his Gavin Rossdale friends about it. That's great. That'd be so good. Guys, thanks for hanging in there. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>